Hi, and welcome back to Advanced Cloud Native Go. My name is Leander Reimer, and I'm happy to be your host. So this section is all about microservice communication. And this is what we'll learn. First of all, we'll dive into some of the challenges involved with different microservice communication patterns, namely synchronous and asynchronous communication. Next up, we'll have a look at binary protocols. And we will implement an RPC system with a binary protocol like protobuffers. Next up, we'll talk about resilience. We will be guarding the synchronous calls we made in the previous example using a circuit breaker such as Hystrix. Then, we'll learn about message queuing. We'll implement async messaging with work queues and RabbitMQ. And finally, we'll have a look at publish subscribe. We'll implement a topic based async publish subscribe communication system using Kafka. So, a lot of ground to be covered. Let's get started. Microservice communication patterns, sync and async. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the following. We'll discuss some of the pros and cons of synchronous microservice communication, and we'll also discuss the pros and cons of asynchronous microservice communication. And finally, we'll have a look at different message payload encodings and discuss the pros and cons of those. So let's see. What I have here is a picture of a very general internet communication model. And basically, you always have two communication partners, communication partner A and communication partner B. And they are connected with a message channel. And via this channel, they transmit information in the form of messages. Now this channel has some typical properties. First of all, it's the direction the message flows. This can be from left to right or from right to left, or bidirectional, for example. You have to take care of the data format and the codec used to describe the message. This channel can have different synchronicity, so it can be asynchronous or, a or synchronous. Delivery guarantees are a topic here. Do you have at most once or at least once delivery guarantee? Of course, a communication channel has to be secured. There is some performance which you have to look at, because latency and bandwidth play a role here. And of course, you might have some overhead, right? The payload overhead and the overall overhead to send the messages. Now this is a possible classification of a communication system. You can have a look at the message receiver cardinality. So the most simplest form is unicast. You have a one-to-one -one relation between the sender and the receiver. So the sender sends a message and there's one receiver on the other side. Multicast is the next one. So you have one sender and on the other side there are n receivers. Those receivers are known in a multicast environment. And the third form is broadcast. So I have one sender and an arbitrary number of receivers, where the number of receivers is unknown. Another form of classification is who begins the communication. So first up is request response. This is the most classical form of synchronous communication. So the client begins the communication, the server receives the request, processes it and sends the response back. And the client has to wait for this. You can have push communication. So here, the server begins the communication and pushes notifications and messages to the client. And as a special form, there's peer-to-peer -peer communication, where sender and receiver both um, intermittently change. Now let's talk about messaging. And messaging is a very flexible, asynchronous, but yet reliable communication pattern. And by using messaging, you can implement quite a few different communication patterns. At the center of messaging is always something called the message-oriented middleware. So you have a message broker that takes care of the delivery of the messages. So this decouples the producer and the consumer. So the most simplest form is message passing. You have one queue, you have one producer and one consumer. If you implement a work queue, you have one producer and a number of consumers that share the work. You could even implement remote procedure calls using messaging. So where you have two queues, the producer publishes to the first queue, the consumer consumes of the first queue and publishes the response to the second queue. And publish subscribe is the final one where you have one publisher and a number of different consumers each listening on their own queue or on their own topic. Right, so finally let's have a look at some popular message payload formats and encodings. Well this is not all of them of course, okay? But those are the primary ones. You have XML, you've got JSON and you've got binary. So XML is quite verbose, and it used to be quite popular with SOAP web services. But nowadays, 
you hardly don't use XML anymore. Popular is really JSON at the moment, right? It's more lightweight, it's easier to process, especially in a web environment. And binary is very efficient, right? If JSON is too verbose as well, what you can do is use binary representations. So this might be very useful in an IoT environment where you have small devices and where message payload size really matters. Right, so that was it for this video.